get our game on the field, but with an intensity that we haven't been at before. <laughs> I am signing um, some of Katie Daly McLean's retirement presents. So obviously she retired just before Christmas, an unbelievable servant to English rugby. So we've tried along with some of the partners of um, England rugby to try and get her a few parting gifts. Bollinger have very kindly donated a huge bottle of, of Bolly, which we're all gonna sign. And then Bremont have also very kindly donated this watch, which has got her cap number on the back. KDM. Hopefully, yeah, it's just a little bit of a symbol as to how much she's meant to England rugby and this side and hopefully, yeah, we can send her off in style. Covid's not been great for giving her a big send-off as we'd like, so hopefully this is a, a bit of a token towards that. Katie and I have played rugby since we were 14 and there's a lot, a lot of memories that go back way. Getting our first cap together was really special. Two girls from the northeast of England running out, singing the national anthem. Uh, it was a very special day. It's sad not to have her around, she's been an absolute legend of the game, someone I've always played rugby with. Rooming with her and once she fell out of bed, it was amazing. I'm literally trashing the area, sorry. It's been amazing to, to play with her and more proudly be able to call her a, a really good friend as well. Very good afternoon from North London for arguably the biggest game in the Allianz Premier 15s. Gives it out to Breach on the wing. Best friend there, Zoe Harrison, tackling the Harlequins winger. Um, me and Zoe first met probably when we were about 14, 15, I think. Um, it was a divisional camp. It was at like South East trials and we actually both didn't get in the first year. Um, and then we got in the second year and then we became roommates and ever since then we've become roommates and I remember we had to constantly text the manager like oh please may you put me and Jess together as roomies because we were quite comfortable with, um, with each other so we always ended up together like always not for each other to go for food, physio sessions, um, like hang out outside of rugby which is pretty cool. I think we're just like quite similar um, is that in the fact that like obviously we both really enjoy rugby but actually we have like lives outside of rugby both quite girly just get on really well I think our sense of humour is like pretty similar we're not in love for anyone that wants to, to know we're not in a relationship we're just really chilled out and we get on really well um, <laughs> we're comfortable to poo together and that's why we share rooms we're known as like the princesses because we used to run around together like everywhere we'd go like breakfast lunch dinner together meetings together physio together and we'd be known as the two little princesses that walk around together <laughs> playing against each other it's kind of funny like in a way like we both actually really want to win and we don't speak like if we went out for the warm-up we wouldn't really speak like you'd have your head down walk past each other like who are you but as soon as we come off the pitch it's like oh hi like all friendly again I think our friendship's strong enough for us to know that we're only playing you know for our club and our friendship afterwards will be exactly the same when we come to camp it doesn't doesn't matter like you're not part of a team like you're part of your country which is England and it's just important to get rid of that and yes we played a tough game at the weekend and it was a draw but actually like what's important now is the Six Nations and we all need to be part of a team and we all need to gel and do what's best for each other to win at the end of the day. We both want to win for our clubs but when you put on the English shirt you want to win for England and it's like the same amount as you want to win for club you want to win for England you're all here together and we want to win so it's like we leave that behind and it's game time, baby. <laughs> it's now Tuesday morning. Um, we came up to Doncaster yesterday, did some skills, got our COVID test done, did some COVID safe weights, um, and now we're gonna train. But today is a glorious day, and this is the view from my room. competition is about us in terms of what we want to get out of it okay and what we want it to look like it's very much focused on how we go about our business we are still very much 
a developing side but this competition is not about development specifically for us now. It's very much about performance. About showing our best version so we make an accurate assessment of where we are, where we need to go next, both individually and collectively. Not everything's going to come off by any stretch, but we need to be ambitious. We need to challenge ourselves to see where we're at in various areas. So we know we can run, 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 and most teams will be able to run for a long time, but not off the back of real high intensity collisions, make your collisions, recycle the ball quickly, collisions and high tempo, that is our objective. Get our game on the field, but with an intensity that we haven't been at before. Let's be aware to opportunities. What we don't want is teams at the end of this saying, if England are in this area, this is what they'll do. We need to be scanning for opportunities. If it's there to drive and score, we drive and score. We've got a multitude of things we can go to. Okay, but the key is to be patient, be physical, Okay, be clinical. I want us to be brave in defence. I don't want us sat back being passive. I want us utilising the energy we've got, getting off the line, making good decisions, scrambling hard if we have to, okay, but I want us winning game line. I don't want us sat on our heels absorbing tackles. Really, really important. It's a big mindset thing is defence, getting off the line. <laughs>
from the 40. Yes, what an absolute G. <laughs> this is Shauna Brown in her natural habitat. Oh, Good session yesterday. The key to a good performance generally revolves around consistency of your training. To make today a bit better than yesterday, and we'll nail it Friday, and then we're ready to go. Rachel Malcolm made a point in the, the press earlier this week to say that Scotland don't feel daunted by, by playing England, which previously they may have done a little bit. I, I think that's, that's probably very, very true because so many of the girls play against each other week in, week out. So they know, you know, they know each other's games. They also play with each other. You know, you, you've only got a lot. You've got Rachel Malcolm and uh, Emily Scarrett, two captains playing you know, in the same side. They certainly won't be daunted by us, as she said. I think it'll be a very physical encounter. You know, they've, they've clearly been doing, doing a lot of work on their defence and their work around the, the breakdown. So physically, uh, we'll be fighting for both teams. We're fighting for the higher ground, I think, on uh, on the first sort of 10, 15 minutes of the game. But hopefully, it'll be a hugely competitive game because uh, they need it and we certainly need it. Long time coming, this game for us. We couldn't have worked any harder than we have done. We could not have worked any harder. We could not be any more prepared than we are to play. Will it be perfect? Absolutely not. It won't be perfect. All right? But the key bit is, okay, the one thing we can't control is the intensity and the application. So let's apply ourselves from minute one to whatever it goes to. Finishers, when you're on, I want to see an impact. Okay? The bar goes up. Okay? No matter what the score is, the bar goes up. We keep the intensity as high as we can. And then tomorrow morning we'll sit, we'll go through it, we'll regroup, we'll see where we're at, and then we'll start preparing for Italy. Put it ready? Advantage at 8 seconds.
I'm super thankful for uh, probably for dropping me that inside ball um, on the ball. I think she's one of the best players in the world, um, and today I think she showed it again. I think she put in an absolutely outstanding performance. To have your sister in the squad and to have your sister as as being as incredible as she is, I think something really special. And um, I strive to be a bit like her sometimes. Don't tell her that, but um, it's always enjoyable to go out there with my sister as well. We weren't able to give you a big send off because of COVID and that will still come in the form of a, a good, good night out, don't worry. But um, yeah, on behalf of the squad, England Rugby and its sponsors, we've just got a couple of gifts for you to mark oh, your unbelievable career with England. We speak a lot about leaving the shirt in a better place and I don't think anybody has a doubt that you definitely did that. World Cups, Captain Sevens, Olympics, the whole shebang. Um, so on behalf of all of us and the entire rugby community, just wish you the best with your time and, and just want to say thank you. Oh, thank you, everybody. Speech. Come Speech. on, Speech. Oh, um, I said it the other day, I actually played rugby for England because I love the game. Like, it was not about anything. And, and by far, the best bit about it has been the people. That is amazing. I scored a try, got a little bit winded. Um, I couldn't it. tell you where the force came from. But yeah, just must have got me in a bad place and yeah, winded. winded badly. Ash gave me a little pep talk and then got back up, ran it off. I was all good. Just needed a bit of time, you know. Sometimes you just need a minute to yourself. Like when I'm eating a cheese salad sandwich after the game. <laughs>